Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, today we have a very special uh, guest, um, Professor Dr. Uh, Cem Sarıca from the University of Tulsa. Um, Dr. Cem Sarıca is currently serving as the direct director of uh, three industry-supported consortia at uh, the Tulsa University, which are fluid flow, paraffin deposition, and horizontal well artificial lift projects. His research interests are production engineering, multi-phase flow in pipes, flow assurance, and uh, horizontal, horizontal wells. He holds a bachelor's and master's degree in petroleum engineering from the U Istanbul Technical University and a PhD degree from, uh, um, from uh, Tulsa University. And today uh, he, uh, did, he accepted our offer to give a very informative presentation to the SP, uh, SP Turkey section members. And the presentation title of today will be Industry Supported Flow Assurance Research Activities at uh, the University of Tulsa. And with that, um, Dr. Sarıca, the floor is yours for the presentation, sir. Um, uh, Sarıcan, uh, th thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate this opportunity uh, to address uh, all of you, uh, talk about uh, what we are doing uh, at the University of Tulsa in the Florida Insurance uh, area. Um, the presentation uh, will be uh, mostly uh, looking at uh, what I am doing. It is not all inclusive of uh, any other uh, faculty uh, uh, or any other department at the University of Tulsa who might be uh, doing uh, flood assurance uh, research. Uh, it will just give me, uh, uh, I, will, I will provide you uh, just uh, what I am doing, but obviously the flow assurance is a very uh, uh, wide area. Uh, I, with that, I'd like to uh, open up my uh, presentation to guide me into uh, um, this talk. And uh, uh, I, I don't know how uh, you would like to proceed with respect to questions, but uh, I don't mind uh, taking questions uh, in the middle of the presentation. We don't have to uh, wait for the end. Uh, uh, but it is, uh, you, you are the moderator, Sergeant. Uh, you decide how, how you, uh, you want to do that. So dear so, guests, um, please, if you have any questions, please enter them in the chat. And I will be following up the chat. And if there are any, any questions, I will ask them to Dr. Sarıca uh, whenever I find the chance. So, okay, let me uh, go to presentation mode uh, uh, here. Um, I'll, I'll start up uh, with the definition or uh, uh, what the flow assurance means. Uh, if you ask many different people, you will get many different answers uh, on flow assurance. Uh, how I uh, uh, see it, uh, I'm going to explain it uh, in graphical form. Uh, I will put, I will make flow assurance uh, center of the universe here, uh, so to speak. And then I will have two circles around it. Uh, in the inner circle, uh, we will have four major areas uh, of the flow assurance. We will start with uh, hydrodynamics. Uh, hydrodynamics will cover the uh, multi-phase flow. And multi-phase flow uh, uh, can be uh, a steady state. We will have uh, different uh, flow regimes, flow patterns, and each of them uh, uh, may present with specific uh, flow assurance issues. However, uh, uh, when we go to uh, um, companies, uh, most of the time when you talk about uh, flow assurance, especially uh, multi-phase related flow assurance issues, they will uh, the uh, uh, mostly dealing with transient uh, aspects of it. Transients uh, uh, can be nat natural transients or imposed transients. Natural transients uh, are simply because of the topology of the flow lines, uh, ups and downs, uh, 
valleys, uh, hills, uh, uh, those configurations can result in liquid accumulations and eventually uh, uh, irregular but violent uh, uh, slugging. We call it either uh, severe slugs or terrain-induced uh, slugs. By the way, uh, uh, this can be uh, uh, also seen in horizontal wells. Um, imposed transients, uh, they are... Uh, our own doing, we may change the flow rates uh, at the inlet uh, suddenly or gradually for many different purposes. That uh, changes can be considered as disturbances and any disturbance introduced into a system has to propagate through the system and that propagation will result in a transient action. And uh, those may, uh, uh, cause us uh, uh, problems, especially uh, um, in, in processing centers uh, to separate the fluids. Going to uh, the next bubble here, uh, uh, I call it restrictors and blockers. In any pipe, uh, uh, well, uh, whether that be well bore or flow line, our produced fluids will deposit material, uh, depending on flow conditions. Those materials will be uh, different. They can be organic materials. They can be uh, uh, minerals, uh, inorganics, uh, that can deposit uh, on, the, on the pipe walls. Or examples of organics are uh, waxes or paraffins. Um, Asphaltines, uh, those are the two most common organic deposits that we see in flow lines and well boards. When we go to uh, mineral deposits, uh, this is mostly coming from uh, produced water. Uh, we may have different minerals in them, and uh, as uh, the solubility is uh, disrupted, uh, they can come out. Uh, of the solution and uh, they can deposit on the pipe walls. Uh, we call them uh, scales. We can have different kinds of scales, uh, calcium carbonate, uh, barium sulfate. And uh, uh, I believe this is also um, a very important problem in uh, geothermal uh, um, energy production, uh, uh, which is uh, very relevant to Turkey right now. Um, and uh, the last one, but not the least, uh, hydrates and ice. Hydrates is combination of hydrocarbons and uh, water. Uh, low uh, carbon weight uh, uh, hydrocarbons, uh, uh, low carbon number hydrocarbons, uh, uh, such as methane, ethane, propane, with water at right temperature and pressure can form hydrates, and hydrates uh, are ice-like structures uh, or snow-like structures. They can accumulate, they can deposit, and eventually uh, they can block the pipe and uh, prevent uh, the flow of the fluids and flow is not assured. Ice is uh, uh, more, uh, uh, it is a rare occasion actually, uh, but it can happen uh, simply, uh, 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 water can ice up and, uh, and uh, plug the pipe. Uh, going to the next one, uh, I call this system integrity. Uh, under that, I have uh, erosion, corrosion mostly, and I included the uh, uh, sand in here. Uh, these are very obvious ones. Uh, erosion and corrosion will uh, uh, reduce the integrity of the pipes, and uh, at some point, uh, flow lines or well bore uh, uh, can uh, uh, can can be compromised. We don't want that to happen. And uh, the last one here, uh, uh, rheology, uh, under that I cover uh, um, high viscosity fluids, 
most of the time we pay our attention to uh, nice fluids, uh, low viscosities, uh, etc. But uh, uh, there are a lot of resources with uh, high viscosities and uh, they present unique issues with respect to flow. Even though we, have, we may have uh, low viscosity uh, uh, fluids, uh, when uh, we mix them with uh, water, we create emulsions and emulsions can present uh, higher uh, uh, viscosities. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, they will be also uh, uh, not behaving in a Newtonian way and uh, rheology needs to be taken care of. And gelation is specific to waxes uh, uh, under certain temperature, poor point temperature, the fluids become uh, gelled and the flow does not happen. All right, uh, this, is, uh, this is simply uh, in my view of uh, flow assurance. Uh, and I might add that hydrodynamics will uh, play an important role in each of these flow assurance issues. Um, Multi-phase flow will drive all these issues. Coming back to definition of flow assurance, some people uh, include the reservoir into uh, flow assurance. Since fluids have to flow from the source, source is the reservoir and reservoir flow um, uh, you know, obviously uh, it can be considered as part of flow assurance, but uh, I did not include that in here. Uh, my focus is simply uh, production side of the things. Uh, uh, if, if you wish uh, or, or will, you can include that in flow assurance too. Now I'm going to be uh, uh, going specific and uh, uh, look at uh, our activities uh, uh, in, 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 in the University of Tulsa. I will focus on two uh, consortium uh, fluid flow projects and paraffin deposition projects. And uh, uh, I, I said consortia and I'd like to uh, describe what consortia is. Uh, before going forward. Uh, consortium uh, is a format of uh, doing uh, and conducting uh, research uh, collaboratively uh, amongst uh, various entities. Uh, and uh, um, for example, uh, any company can become uh, a member of the consortium by uh, uh, contributing yearly subscription fee. And the, these fees are used to fund uh, experimental activities, uh, graduate students, uh, staff, and faculty. And uh, members of the consortium collectively uh, decide on uh, the research projects. And uh, members of the consortium can be involved in uh, the projects as much as they would like. Uh, it is uh, truly a collaborative uh, effort to solve uh, problems uh, that the industry is uh, facing with. Um, I'm gonna look at the fluid flow projects First, and then I'm going to go to uh, uh, paraffin deposition projects. And uh, I will briefly summarize what we are doing in fluid flow projects to give you a snapshot of uh, where industry is in uh, fluid flow projects. Um, giving a little bit of a background on uh, PFFP, fluid flow projects. It, it was established in 1973. We are uh, uh, coming close to our 50th uh, anniversary. Um, basically what we are doing, uh, we are uh, uh, trying to solve the multi-phase problems uh, of uh, the industry, uh, whether that be uh, wellbore flow, 
or uh, flow in flow lines or pipelines, anything related to multi-phase flow is within uh, our uh, realm. Um, currently, our focus is on upscaling studies. Uh, upscaling uh, uh, is important. Um, up until uh, now, uh, most of the studies have been conducted at small scale and low pressure facilities, uh, experimental ones, obviously. Uh, what we do typically, uh, we conduct experimental uh, uh, studies uh, and uh, the results of the experimental studies are incorporated into predictive uh, tools uh, which are uh, um, models uh, based on uh, uh, physics uh, principles, uh, uh, which we uh, have uh, developed uh, already, and uh, keep developing them also as we find new uh, phenomena. Um, in upscaling studies, currently we are looking at pressure effects. We are going from atmospheric pressures uh, uh, up to 500 uh, PSI uh, within a large, a relatively large diameter pipe, which is uh, six inch in uh, diameter. And uh, we are also uh, looking at uh, water cut effects, meaning that we are not only looking at gas oil flows, uh, we are looking at gas or water flow. And uh, uh, I talked to you about uh, uh, the rheology effects. Uh, we are also looking at oil viscosity effects on two-phase flow. Um, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have a tool to uh, uh, do the predictions, uh, a physics-based uh, unified model and a software based on uh, that unified model. And we uh, continuously uh, improve that. Um, we are also looking at specifically oil water flow. And we uh, currently, uh, we are collaborating with uh, Unicamp uh, in, in Brazil uh, for, for that project. Uh, by the way, with this, uh, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, we are uh, open to any type of uh, collaboration with, uh, uh, with anybody uh, uh, willing uh, to work with us. Uh, we, uh, we are not, uh, we're not closed uh, uh, to ourselves. We uh, always look for, uh, um, you know, well, for, for the common good of uh, the industry, common good of the uh, uh, academia, uh, we, uh, we are open to collaboration. And, uh, in the model, in the unified model, uh, we have empirical relationships. Uh, it is very uh, uh, rare to have uh, a model without any empirical relationships. Um, and uh, in, in those relationships are developed for certain uh, experimental conditions and uh, their applicability outside of their developmental conditions uh, uh, are in question. And uh, um, then uh, uh, people uh, have developed different ones for different uh, conditions. Uh, what we are doing currently, collaborating with our uh, computer science department here in uh, uh, application of data analytics. We are trying to see uh, which closure relationships uh, are better performing and should be used in our uh, software. Um, again, uh, what you're seeing here, uh, as uh, uh, we uh, um, step out of our uh, uh, expertise area, we are seeking collaboration. And in this case, uh, we are collaborating uh, internally with our computer science department. And the next uh, project, uh, we have advanced flow field investigation. Uh, 
This is simply looking at uh, the velocities of uh, different phases as they flow in, uh, uh, in the pipe. I will show you some examples of that a little bit later. And we have uh, um, corrosion related uh, project. Uh, we are looking at effect of multi-phase flow on internal corrosion of uh, large diameter pipelines. There, what our interest is, uh, can we, under what conditions, uh, disperse all the water in oil so that water does not see the pipe wall and does not cause any corrosion? And we have uh, um, transient flow uh, uh, research. Uh, we are collaborating with uh, uh, Federal University uh, of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And we are working on multi-phase flow metering. And uh, uh, recently we have started the uh, flow uh, pipe interaction, uh, how two-phase flow induced vibration is affecting the pipe fittings. And this project line will continue on uh, to look at the pipes itself and different pipe configurations. Uh, it is really interesting area and we recently uh, posted a video on our uh, LinkedIn uh, channel. Uh, if, you, uh, if you like, uh, you can go and see some of the videos there. I did not, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna present it here, but it is quite interesting. Um, let me go to, well, I mean, we have uh, many projects. I'd like to present uh, bits and pieces of a couple of them here. The example one is... Uh, Dr. Sergio, uh, before we move forward, um, there was one question. How many uh, graduate students and researchers do you employ currently in the, in the consortia? Uh, all together, uh, all three consortium, uh, we... Uh, have about 15 uh, uh, graduate students and the breakdown of uh, them uh, between PhD and masters uh, uh, half and half uh, uh, we have a, a well balanced uh, uh, distribution um, uh, this can this number can go uh, uh, and be low as 12 for uh, students and it can go up to 20. And uh, I do work with uh, two uh, other faculty, one from uh, uh, Petroleum Engineering, uh, Dr. Uh, Eduardo Perea, the other one uh, from Chemical Engineering, uh, Dr. Nagu Daraboina. And uh, we uh, have uh, postdocs, uh, uh, currently, we have two postdocs, postdoctoral research associates. Uh, we have uh, four uh, technicians, actually uh, uh, four technicians, but we have also two uh, uh, labor. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, hire uh, based on demand, uh, and we have two administrative assistants. Uh, we, we are... Uh, relatively uh, sizable uh, uh, group. Uh, uh, it, it is uh, more or less a, uh, uh, in, in, in US terms, uh, we, are, we are like uh, a small uh, business, small company. Did I answer the question? Of course, thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, let me uh, uh, continue. Uh, example one is high viscosity oil and air two-phase flow. Uh, detail flow measurements will be emphasized in that one. And uh, example two will be upscaling studies. And uh, example one, uh, facility schematic is given here. I'm gonna walk you through this. Um, here uh, we have, uh, liquid tank. This is our uh, pump, uh, screw type pump. And then the uh, liquid is uh, pumped 
and uh, it goes uh, through uh, a flow meter, Coriolis type flow meters. And then it goes to uh, the test section to mixing to, through mixing teeth. Air comes from an outside compressor uh, and it is metered again with Coriolis meters and sent into uh, this uh, test section. Along the test section, we have uh, many different uh, uh, measurement devices. I will uh, focus my attention on uh, two of them. One uh, here uh, looks uh, like black box uh, and uh, blown up here. This is the PIV, particle image velocimetry device, which gives us uh, local velocity information across the cross section of the pipe. And here in this region, uh, uh, what we have uh, a uh, uh, CTA, uh, constant temperature anemometry uh, device, which gives us the wall shear information. All right, uh, and uh, after uh, uh, the flow goes through the test section, we have a return line and uh, it goes, uh, everything goes into the tank and uh, uh, it, the tank also serves as separator. Air is vented out. I'm not showing uh, the pipe going up here. Actually, uh, we are not venting into the room itself. It is going outside. Uh, uh, and then liquid uh, from the bottom, uh, again, goes to the pump and it continuously circulates. And uh, out of PIV measurements, what I would get, uh, the, the black one is the raw image. And then uh, we uh, uh, do post-processing uh, of it, and then try to get uh, velocities. Uh, this is a typical slug flow. If, if you look at the raw image, this is a liquid uh, region of the slug flow, and this is the bubble region of the slug flow. And within slug flow, we, what we see a uh, uh, gradation of the velocity, higher velocities uh, near the center of the pipe and uh, progressively reduce velocities uh, as we come close to uh, the pipe walls. Gonna show you two captures of high-speed videos. Uh, we are also using high-speed videos. Uh, of slug flow, and uh, we also have uh, another flow pattern we call pseudo slug flow. Uh, pseudo slug flow is a little bit less defined, uh, and there is no blockage of the pipe compared to slug flow. In slug flow, we have complete blockage of the pipe with the liquid. Uh, and we don't see that in soda slug flow. And soda slug flow is uh, with really high gas rates and gas velocities. Look at the uh, gas velocity here, seven meter per second. In this one, we have 0 0.5 meter per second. And uh, the uh, CTA results, uh, as I said, that we are measuring the uh, shear stress at the wall. And uh, what we are looking at, the first one in the liquid film or bubble region of the slug flow. The second one is in the slug body. And uh, what is uh, used in the modeling right now, constant shear in the liquid film and in the slug body. And those are shown with straight lines here. However, the measurements are shown with the curves. As, uh, as we uh, see, uh, shear stress is not constant based on the measurements. It is varying, it is increasing in the liquid film until it meets uh, the uh, liquid uh, slug body and uh, also uh, uh, decreasing in the slug body as, as uh, slug passes uh, through. And what does that mean? Uh, that guides us uh, in our modeling efforts. 
Um, we need to change our models to incorporate this behavior. Um, some takeaways. Uh, um, we uh, have proven that PIV and CTA can be successfully used to better characterize and understand slug flow. Um, and uh, what we have also uh, uh, proven that the film uh, in the bubble region does not stagnate or does not stop. Some people claim that uh, we have disproved that with the velocity measurements and shear stress uh, varies around the circumference and shear stress never becomes constant and uh, um, magnitude of the acceleration pressure losses needs to be investigated. Uh, typically, uh, this is uh, ignored, but currently we are uh, looking into that better, that uh, uh, assumption of ignoring acceleration pressure drop is good enough or uh, where it is uh, acceptable. Example two, uh, outside facility, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about up upscaling here. This is six inch in diameter pipe. Uh, it is about 550 feet long. What we have here is processing center. And uh, this is the uh, uh, test section going all the way up and down and coming back to the processing center. Uh, due to the time constraints, I'm not going to describe the uh, uh, flow loop uh, in, in detail to you, but if you have any questions, uh, I would be more than happy to do so. But I'm going to go to uh, uh, what we are measuring. Uh, we are measuring uh, the topology of the interface through a device that we call wire mesh sensor. We are uh, uh, visualizing the flow under pressure. We are also acquiring uh, droplets uh, or field uh, information uh, by using isokinetic probes. So we are looking at entrainment uh, behavior that way. We have probes at three different uh, locations at the cross section of the pipe. I'm gonna show some of the results uh, a little bit later, but uh, I'm gonna first uh, talk about why I'm a sensor. This is simply uh, uh, 32 by 32 uh, wire combination, normal to uh, each other perpendicular. And we have a, a transmitter and receiver. Uh, what we are transmitting is uh, uh, electrical current, and uh, we are either measuring the conductivity of the fluids or capacitance of the fluids. This is uh, simply uh, a, a schematic a drawing. This is uh, uh, what is in real life. Uh, and uh, uh, Data after acquired, the raw data will look like this. I'm playing uh, it in time series. This is uh, simply indicating uh, the liquid at the bottom uh, and we have gas on top. Uh, typically this is stratified for conditions. And then I'm gonna play the uh, uh, process uh, data here on the right. <coughs> And with red, what we are seeing, the uh, uh, position of the interface. Uh, and as you see, it is going up and down, what it means that we are having waves passing by. And uh, from these, I can get many different information, metability, and also wave characteristics can easily be obtained, which can, uh, which, are really important parameters for uh, models to use. And from our uh, uh, high-speed captures uh, from uh, the visualization window under pressure, 
Uh, I just put a couple of videos here for visual purposes. You can see how much aerated uh, the flow is, uh, air entrainment in the liquid. Uh, these are uh, uh, two different, uh, but slightly different conditions with respect to gas. And uh, uh, reconstructed images of the flow is presented on the right. Uh, after we get the data, uh, we reconstruct it. This is slug flow. We have the slug here and the film in front and at the back of it. This is sort of slug flow. Clearly, there is no uh, a blockage, and we have uh, uh, aerated region. Uh, of, uh, uh, of the liquid slot, but it is very aerated and there is no uh, uh, blockage in that one. And I can get uh, uh, real uh, uh, additional, very important information on structure velocities once I identify uh, the structures. I can measure their velocity uh, if I know the time of flight from one location to the other. We call it uh, translational velocity or wave celerity, depending on, uh, depending on the structure itself. If I have slug, we call it translation velocity. It is here. If I have waves, it is the wave velocity or wave celerity It is here. And in between, it will be a sort of slug flow, and it has a varying behavior. And uh, this is kind of uh, almost uh, a universal relationship. If I can collapse these curves into one curve by finding a proper uh, variables, uh, this will uh, be very helpful. Currently, we are looking into uh, collapsing these uh, curves into one. By the way, structure velocity goes into the models as a closure relationship. Okay, uh, out of this work, uh, um, we really uh, uh, are happy to get uh, topology information which uh, provides us with the better modeling of interface momentum transfer. And uh, what we have done, which I have not uh, presented uh, uh, here, uh, but it is very important. Uh, we have identified a thin film layer around the upper periphery of the pipe. And uh, it uh, uh, led us to develop better modeling of the film region. And uh, we have uh, better, already better characterized sort of slug flows. Now I'm gonna to go to TUPDP. TUPDP is a separate consortium focusing only on paraffin deposition. Uh, one question may come up, why aren't you doing this all, all in uh, under one umbrella? Uh, we can, however, uh, uh, companies are not interested in uh, every area. They, uh, they, some companies are interested in this, some companies are not. For that reason, uh, uh, we, are, uh, um, we have generated this uh, uh, consortium to address only paraffin deposition issues. Um, Dr. Her, uh, yeah. Before we go to the next subject, I have um, two questions coming. Um, the first one is about how do you how do you process uh, the data and uh, which softwares are you using for data processing and analysis? Oh, many. There's no one uh, uh, one software. Uh, we uh, uh, we use different data acquisition systems. Uh, we have LabVIEW based uh, data acquisition. Uh, um, uh, we uh, uh, acquire uh, uh, high frequency, low frequency data, typically pressure and temperature information is uh, uh, acquired with low frequency data. However, uh, uh, the other data such as uh, uh, conductivity, capacitance, uh, they are uh, uh, acquired at high frequency uh, mode. Uh, 
Um, and uh, going back to uh, um, the wire mesh, wire mesh uh, device is uh, uh, purchased from uh, a German institute, uh, HZDR. Uh, the uh, uh, device came with its own data acquisition and data processing uh, uh, program. Uh, we are using that specific uh, program. Okay, and um, there is another question. Um, in horizontal wells, how is yes. the ang how is the angle of well pad changing the behavior of flow in two and three phases? I know it is a quite broad question, but um, do you have any examples? Um, I am not in this presentation, but if uh, the uh, person who asked the question gets in touch with me. I can spend more time with him on uh, his question. It can uh, vary uh, depending on flow conditions uh, and uh, uh, pipe orientation, toe up, toe down. And if uh, we have undulations, it will affect also. Uh, in general, one might say, uh, I don't like generalizations, but uh, in general, uh, one might say, if you have flow up configuration, your flow in horizontal wells uh, typically will be in stratified flow conditions. If you have uh, toe down configuration, uh, it will be mostly intermittent flow or slot flow. But Again, it will be uh, uh, rate dependent. Mm -hmm. I would be more than happy to uh, uh, take that question offline and uh, uh, engage with the person asking the question. Thank you. Okay. Going back to paraffin deposition project, currently we are looking at uh, single phase oil flow uh, conditions. Uh, we are looking at deposition mechanisms, and then we are looking at uh, deposition under multi-phase flow conditions. And uh, we are uh, focusing also on the management side. How do we manage, how do we prevent or uh, uh, make the uh, deposition effects uh, lesser using different uh, methods, such as uh, uh, application of inhibitors, such as uh, uh, using thermal methods. I'm going to give uh, uh, two examples, one on single phase, the other on uh, multi-phase, specifically on stratified flow. Single phase deposition, uh, uh, they are still debating uh, uh, the very uh, simple thing. Uh, what is the mechanism of uh, that position? How does paraffins deposit on the pipe wall? Uh, currently, uh, a common uh, consensus is molecular diffusion, but everybody is coming up with something different, uh, a deviation from uh, uh, molecular diffusion, uh, working around the edge of it uh, to improve. Uh, recently, what we have uh, done, uh, we have uh, uh, produced evidence to refute the uh, conventional belief. Uh, I'm going to show you a video uh, and uh, see uh, if you believe me uh, that uh, there is something else uh, other than molecular diffusion. Um, one simple example is uh, given in this uh, uh, plot. Uh, molecular diffusion, just to take you back a little bit, uh, if you go back to your uh, um, mass transfer uh, knowledge, wherever you might have obtained it, uh, diffusion can happen only when you have uh, concentration difference, right? Uh, masses go from higher concentration to lower concentration. In uh, uh, pipe flow, 
when we have paraffinic oils, uh, paraffin uh, uh, concentrations, max concentrations, dictated by the temperature. If the uh, temperature in the pipe is higher than uh, the pipe wall temperature, then uh, uh, you have different concentrations of the wax. And that different concentration drives the molecular diffusion, meaning wax molecules go from uh, the pipe, fluid in the pipe, to the pipe wall. And as they reach the pipe wall, magically they deposit, okay? It means that for deposition, we need to have a delta T, temperature difference between the fluid and the pipe wall. Here, the fluid temperature is called uh, T bulk, and the pipe wall temperature is called T cooler. What we have done in our experiments, we kept them equal. If they are equal, what should I be concluding from uh, molecular diffusion uh, theory? There is no concentration difference, and therefore I should not have any deposition on the pipe wall. I kept it equal, conducted the experiments. This is the time series of the experiment. Uh, the horizontal coordinate is the time, and vertical coordinate is the wax thickness on the pipe. And what are you seeing here? A continuous increase in the thickness, even though I kept the temperatures constant. What this uh, made us uh, uh, do, further investigate, is that correct? Uh, based on molecular diffusion, there should not be any deposition, but this is telling me that there is still deposition. And the question is, uh, then uh, uh, is molecular diffusion the real mechanism? And I'm gonna show you uh, uh, another example uh, with the visualization. This is taken with uh, microscope captures. Uh, um, what we are seeing is in micron uh, scale. Uh, we have a microscope uh, uh, and uh, a video capturing device. Uh, this is the pipe wall. And uh, now nothing is uh, showing, but it will come. Pay attention here. Uh, and then you started to see uh, crystals going by, wax forming and flowing. But not much deposit. You see, this has formed somewhere and then come and uh, stuck on the pipe wall. And this is developing as a deposit layer. It is not coming from uh, uh, directly, uh, uh, it is not developing from bottom up. It is coming from somewhere and depositing on the pipe wall. Okay. Um, Multi-phase flow, I'm going to show you uh, some examples of it. This is uh, actually real oil uh, and under certified flow conditions, uh, this is the wax deposit on the pipe. At the top of the pipe, there is no deposit. And uh, uh, from uh, uh, the scientific perspective, uh, what we have also looked at uh, is the deposition rate changing between single phase and two phase flows? Uh, um, the horizontal coordinate is li the liquid velocity and the vertical coordinate is deposit mass per unit area. And what we have here, the circles are single phase flow and the other uh, shapes are two phase flow under different conditions. Clearly, this figure indicates that under multi-phase flow conditions, we have higher deposition rates. Currently, the models assume that the single-phase uh, approach is valid. 
what we have proven here, it is not. Okay, uh, to wrap up, I think I took a little bit longer than uh, I'm supposed to. I apologize for that. Um, we have already come a long way in flow assurance uh, through uh, innovative uh, experimental and uh, modeling studies. I try to provide a, uh, a snapshot, a window into uh, our activities at TU. Um, has everything been solved? No, significant challenges and opportunities still remain. The only way to tackle those is to uh, work collaboratively, academia, research institutes, industry, uh, on several aspects to improve our knowledge and develop uh, better technologies and more efficient technologies to uh, ever, uh, in, in ever-changing uh, environment that we are in. Um, I'd like to conclude with uh, acknowledging former and current students uh, of uh, mine. Uh, uh, they are very uh, dedicated, hardworking uh, individuals, uh, uh, colleagues, uh, uh, doctors Eduardo Perea, uh, Typhon Aydin and Nagud Araboyna. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, uh, TFFP and TUPDP members uh, for uh, not only their uh, uh, financial support, but also uh, continuous intellectual uh, contributions of, uh, of them. And uh, students, uh, I like to uh, list them here. Uh, they're not students anymore, uh, um, they, uh, with the exception of one. Uh, Dr. Rosemary Brito Smith, uh, the high viscosity videos are taken by her, uh, working uh, for uh, Exxon Mobil right now. The PIV uh, uh, pictures are taken by uh, uh, Tai Wu Kim, uh, working for Kitech in Korea. Dr. Sriram uh, Ramachandran, uh, uh, working as postdoc at the Colorado School of Mines. Uh, Dr. Yulin Fan is a member, uh, she is a uh, faculty of uh, CSM Petroleum Engineering. Dr. Auzan Sodermo. Uh, working for Schlumberger in Norway, Dr. Henry Rodriguez, uh, uh, working for Petrobras, uh, Dr. Duck Warren, Deep Cast, Dr. Yuenda Chi, Halliburton, and uh, Luis uh, uh, Gutiago, uh, PhD candidate, and Arjun Genamati, uh, recently uh, graduated and uh, uh, went back to his home country. With that, uh, uh, I will uh, end my presentation. I would be more than happy to uh, take any uh, any questions. Thank you, Dr. Sarija. Um, I do not see any further questions at the moment on the chat. Um, therefore, I'd like to conclude. Um, thank you for sharing your valuable time with us. Um, we appreciate your support for SP Turkey section activities. And uh, dear audience, um, you can find further details and the link to the recorded video from our website. Please visit uh, www.spturkey.org um, to get the link for the recorded uh, recorded video after uh, after the presentation. And I would appreciate if you can put me in touch with the person who asked the question on horizontal wells. I will uh, share your contact information with uh, uh, with him, and uh, he will get in touch, sir. All right. Well, thank you so much, and you have a wonderful Dr. Sarija. All right. Thank you.